pleasure to see you all again. And here is ASEAN News. Philippine Catholics pray orderly at the Statue of Christ hope the COVID-19 ends this year. Thousands of Catholic devotees observe physical distancing as they stood in lines for masses in the Philippine capital to celebrate a centuries-old black wooden statues of Jesus Christ believed to bring miracles to the faithful. My personal prayer is good health for my family and for us all to get along. I pray for a better Philippines in 2021 and for COVID-19 to end. I pray this COVID pandemic will end and that the new variant wouldn't get here. I also pray Jesus guides and protects my family as well. Gabayan po sila lagi ng Pong Jesus Nazareno po. With the coronavirus pandemic afflicting the country, authorities cancel an annual procession of the life-sized image of the Black Nazarene, the country's largest religious event that throws millions of devotees in annual ritual observed for 200 years. Instead, church leaders organize 15 masses at the Cuyapo Church, which houses the life-sized statue and live-streaming the worship services, pleading for devotees not to flock into the basilica. Police estimate a crowd of nearly 23,000. About 80% of country's 108 million people identify as a Roman Catholic, a legacy of hundreds of years as a Spanish colony. In contrast, the cancel annual procession of the statue depicting Jesus shouldering a heavy cross usually draw millions of devotees, many barefoot and jostling to get close and touch the image. Video from the procession in 2020 shows the crowds surrounding the statue. So far, Philippines records more than 483,000 cases and 9,300 deaths. The Philippines is the second highest COVID-19 cases and casualties in Southeast Asia behind Indonesia. Jakarta residents shock and sad after another flood crash this year. Indonesian resident says they are sad and shocked to hear news of another plane crash in the new year after Sriwijaya Air went down the day before. We are sad about the plane crash. We hope Indonesia is safe because there have been too many incidents. I hope rules on flight maintenance can be strengthened. It is still lacking now. For example, the flight schedule of each aircraft is too packed. Touchdown and takeoff, touchdown and takeoff. Maybe there wasn't enough maintenance. I hope the authority can take note of this. Flight SJ182 with 62 people on board was en route to Pontianak in West Kalimantan before it disappeared from radar screens four minutes after takeoff. Founded in 2003, Jakarta-based Sriwijaya Air Group flies largely within Indonesia. The budget airline has had a solid safety record, with no onboard casualties in four incidents records on the Aviation Safety Network database. CEO Jefferson Irwin Jawena says the flight was in good condition. Jakarta residents urges the authority to regulate maintenance process to assure people that it is safe to fly. The nearly 27-year-old Boeing 737-500 was much older than Boeing's problem plagued 737 MAX model, one of which crashed off Jakarta in late 2018, killing all 189 people aboard the Lion Air flight. Older 737 models are widely flown and do not have the system implicated in the MAX safety crisis. At least 62 people inside Indonesia's Sriwijaya airplane that crashed. Hello. An official says a Sriwijaya airplane with 62 people on board lost contact after taking off from Indonesia's capital Jakarta on a domestic flight, adding that suspect debris had been found in the sea. Indonesian Transport Minister Budi Karya at a news conference says 50 passengers were on board along with 12 crew members. The Boeing 737-500 with call sign HJ-182 on road to Pontianak in West Kalimantan disappeared from radar screens after takeoff just after 2.40 p.m. Bagus Puruhito, head of the country's search and rescue agency, Pasarna, says teams have dispatched to search the waters of North Jakarta after local residents report found some suspect debris 
the debris had been sent to Lanchang Island to be identified. Sriwijaya Air, an Indonesian airline, says in a statement it is gathering more detailed information regarding the flight before it could make a fuller statement. Indonesia President urges prayers for plane crash victims. Indonesian President urges the people to pray for Sriwijaya plane crash victims after the flight with 62 passengers crashed into the sea. Kita lakukan upaya yang terbaik. We will do our best to find and save the victims, and together let's pray that they can be found. In the name of the government and Indonesian people, we would like to express our condolences on what was happened. And yesterday, I already instructed the Transport Ministry and Search and Rescue Agency to help with the search operation as quick as possible. Yang dibantu oleh TNI dan Polri untuk segera melakukan operasi pencarian dan pertolongan yang secepat-cepatnya kepada para korban. The Boeing 737-500 was headed to Pontianak in West Kalimantan before it disappeared from radar screens for minutes after takeoff. Search and rescue teams scoured the waters near the crash site as human body parts and suspect pieces of the plane are retrieved. Officials also say they may detect signals that could come from a flight recorder of the flight. The crash is the first major airline incident in Indonesia since the crash of a Lyon Air Boeing 737 MAX in 2018 that killed 189 passengers and crew. That plane also crashed into the Java Sea soon after takeoff from Soekarno Hatta Airport. At least 12 deaths and 27 still missing in Indonesia landslide after heavy rain in the village. According to the rescue coordinator, search and rescue operations continued in western Indonesia where landslides caused by heavy rain killed at least 13 and left 27 missing. As for the total number of victims who died so far, we have found 12 people. The Disaster Management Authority says the landslides at Jihangjuang village in West Java, about 150 kilometers or 95 miles southeast of the capital Jakarta, took place at 4 p.m. and 7.30 p.m. West Java Governor Ritwan Kamil says during a visit to the disaster site that authorities are still collecting data to determine the exact number of missing and that evacuation operations for residents in the surrounding area are underway. Indonesia frequently suffers floods and landslides, particularly during the rainy season from November to March, a situation often worsened by the cutting down of forests. China is ready to help Myanmar fight the COVID-19 disease and work together to promote economic recovery. Chinese State Councilor and Foreign Minister Wang Yi says China promises to deliver COVID-19 vaccines to Myanmar to help its Asian neighbor control the COVID-19 pandemic during his visit to the country, which is the first stop of his trip to four Southeast Asian countries. Myanmar President Win Mint and State Councilor Aung San Suu Kyi held separate meetings with Wang in Nai Pitao, capital of Myanmar. Chinese president says China will always stand with Myanmar to overcome the pandemic and jointly promote economic recovery to jointly build a China-Myanmar community with a shared future. Wong stresses China decided to provide Myanmar with a batch of new vaccine assistance and is ready to further carry out vaccine cooperation with Myanmar. Wong hopes that the two countries will effectively implement the construction of China-Myanmar Economic Corridor to promote the overall layout of the economic corridor supported by the north, east and west ends as well as the connectivity. Meanwhile, Myanmar sincerely thanks the Chinese government and people from all walks of life for providing valuable support to Myanmar in fighting against the pandemic. The country hopes to develop vaccine cooperation with China. The two sides should negotiate to host the Myanmar-China Cultural Tourism Year and further enhance exchanges and visits between the two countries. During the visit, Wang also held talks with State Councilor of Myanmar, Aung San Suu Kyi. Polished photo shows that the king of Thailand and his royal consort cleaned the prison.
Palace Palace releases photographs of King Mahavajira Longkorn visiting prisons with his royal consort Sinanat Wongvajira Pakti as the royal family steps up public appearances following mass protests demanding reforms to the monarchy. In the segment on the nightly royal bulletin on state and private TV channels, the king and his consort restored to her position last year after having been disgraced and stripped of her titles are shown inspecting projects in jails across Thailand. They are photographed sweeping floors and speaking to officials during the last two months of 2020 and the segment also features interviews with inmates speaking about the benefits of the project. Such appearances have become more common since the king returns to Thailand with Queen Sutida and his encouraged amid unprecedented protests calling for changes to the monarchy and the resignation of the military-backed Prime Minister Prayur Chang Ocha. The palace has made no official statements on months of protest. After his coronation in 2019, the king conferred the title Royal Nobel Consort on Sinanat, a former nurse, before stripping her of her titles for being disloyal in what an official statement at the time described as a rivalry with the queen. Her titles are restored in September 2020 and she was publicly declared untainted in another official statement. Chinese says World Health Organization's team will fly to Wuhan to find the origin of COVID-19. Chinese Foreign Minister says that the World Health Organization's team of international experts to investigate the origin of COVID-19 will fly from Singapore to the Chinese city of Wuhan. After consultations between the two sides, the World Health Organization's international team of experts investigating the origins of the new coronavirus will arrive in China on January 14 and will jointly conduct a scientific research into the origins of the new coronavirus with Chinese scientists. Based on the current plan, they will fly to Wuhan from Singapore. Lack of authorization from Beijing had delayed the arrival of the Tang Strong team on a long-awaited mission to investigate early infections in what Chinese foreign minister called a misunderstanding. China has yet to release details on the team's itinerary. WHO chief Tedros Adhanom Ghebreyesus welcomed the news and says that studies will begin in the central city of Wuhan, where the first human cases were identified. China has been accused of cover-up that delayed its initial response, allowing the virus to spread since first emerged in the central city of Wuhan late in 2019. Chinese and Turkey extend condolences to Indonesia over Sriwijaya airplane crash. Chinese President Xi Jinping sent a message of condolence to Indonesian President Joko Widodo over the recent crash of Sriwijaya air passenger plane. The state chief says he shocks to learn about the crash. Noting that China is friendly neighbor of Indonesia, he adds, on behalf of the Chinese government and people, would like to express deep condolences over the victims and extend sincere sympathies to the bereaved. Meanwhile, Turkey also extend condolences to Indonesian from Foreign Minister Mevlut Kovusoglu, personally condoled with Indonesian counterpart Retno Marsudi in a phone talk. He adds that they have learned with a great sorrow that a passenger's airplane flying from Jakarta to the city of Pontianak in Indonesia crashed. Indonesia's National Search and Rescue Agency team continuing a search operation for the 62 people aboard Sriwijaya Air Flight 182, which crashed into the ocean shortly after takeoff on Saturday. Malaysian skin declares second lockdown after the COVID-19 cases increasing in the country. Residents in Malaysia's capital of Kuala Lumpur welcome news of a second national lockdown aimed to curb rising COVID-19 cases. Malaysia's skin declared a state of emergency across the country in a move that tightens Prime Minister Muhyiddin Yassin's grip on power and delays the elections. Under the second lockdown, we thank God, small businesses are allowed to operate. We won't need any help from the government. So far, I think we agree with this step. It does not affect the riot that much, uh, but it affects certain ways that the government is running now. 
And also, I think it's also giving some stability to the political uh, environment, which there's a bit of a, uh, a bit chaotic at this moment. Uh, uh, different parties are seeing different things and wanting to do different things, which can be, which can have a, not a good effect on the whole nation, the, the, the citizens as well. I think with the emergency power, I, I personally feel that things will be a bit more peaceful. Looking forward, uh, and more focus on the rakyat, more focus on the rakyat, you know, the well-being of the citizens of this country. The emergency measures gives the Prime Minister and his cabinet extraordinary powers, including allowing the government to introduce laws without the approval of the parliament. The number of new daily infections hit a record high, reaching the 3,000 mark for the first time. Total coronavirus cases passed 138,000 with 555 deaths. Thank you for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy, have a nice weekend, and see you again.